To 100% slime rancher, I'm going to have to capture every slime and force them to give me their poop, which are called plorts. Collect every variety of plort to unique items that the extractors give me, pop all gordos across the different parts of the map in this game, max out the 7Z club, and all its goodies. I also have to complete the slimepedia, open all treasure pods, get all 57 achievements in slime rancher, and complete the story of Beatrix LeBeau. This is the first time I ever tried to 100% a video game, so please go easy on me. As I begin my adventure, it started on a far, far range 1,000 light years away from Earth. My goal? To enslave all slimes early on to get their plorts for money. Learning about the different plorts across the board, there was a lot of slimes that I would have to find. Even seeing the map for the first time, this was going to be one heck of an adventure. When you press M, look at this whole wild world. This is also that. Oh my god. If I was going to upgrade the corrals for all my soon-to-be slimes, money was definitely needed. So were pink slimes because it's all I could afford at the time. These many pink slimes did become my friends as I fed them, seeing that I was the only person on this weird new range. What I definitely needed now was some of those blue-looking slimes, the rock ones. Eagerly waiting my return home with some rock slimes, something caught my eye. With my ever-growing family of slimes, I was one step closer to the other 156 things I needed to do. <laughs> the first of many Gordos stood in front of me, looking to see what it ate and checking the area for more food. Plorts were pretty great, but so was a nice juicy Q-berry, making it my first official garden and one that would serve my slimes super well. Certain slimes in the game had their favorite foods, and this was one of those for something later on. My big break would be the grotto located on my ranch, the only place that could hold the phosphor slimes as they needed dark enclosed areas. As I continued my venture forward, I started to realize keys were also needed if I wanted to explore this game further. For the time being, I spent my days at the range, gathering all the food I collected from heartbeats to cube berries and feeding my slimes happily. Since I didn't have so many tabby slimes, it made perfect sense to create my first combinations of Largos. So with a little recap, I sucked up more slimes, used all the plorts for selling, and gave the corrals a few more upgrades. All in a day's work for Ray of Slimes. The most important upgrade my corrals did need was plort collectors, so I didn't have to risk my butt going around the slimes. Some slimes were more hostile than others and gave me the creeps. With the money I had from previous days, this was the exact place I wanted. It was also time to overfeed this big galoot because I needed its key. As much as I wanted to visit that big bridge area again, I had other plans. To use the key I acquired for a completely new area, I was about to get my suck on and suck on hard. For multiple boom slimes that had no choice and finding another map reveal. There was also something odd about this next part. Sorry, not sorry. What I also realized was how much stuff I still needed to unlock in the Slimepedia. Realizing what I actually signed up for in the moment. All of my slimes were also doing the slime things. You know, gush, 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 and ick, ick, ick. Maybe a boom or two sometimes. With a new morning here, the phosphor slimes really enjoyed the heck out of these Q-berries. Also, big surprise on its way, as this new open area would give me the ability to host cockfights. I'm kidding. This is where all the hens lived and didn't fight one another. Don't tell my slimes this, but they were my goofballs and I loved feeding them, even if they weren't hungry. But now it was time to welcome a new slime into my already wonderful family. Curious to also see what this new cave entrance had, the rock slimes had to go. I was onto something bigger here. With so many new things happening, I wasn't sure what to even do here. Apparently Tar spawned and started eating all the other slimes alive. It was now my turn to return the favor. The slimes that messed me up in the beginning, those suckers were going down tonight. One set of slimes I really didn't fancy were the boom slimes. As fun as they were, I didn't like almost dying every time I got close to them. So for now, I'd store them in the back corner of my chicken coop. This also gave me the space needed to add some rad slimes and crystal slimes to their own corrals. Between more Q-berry galore and heartbeat galore, I found more money laying around to upgrade my gardens. Things were about to be maxed out and then some. Next up was this big blue Gordo. The food I did have wouldn't be enough, so with a small trip back home, I had just the thing to pop the sucker. On a side note, why does this game have so many things to suck and pop? It only just hit me now. <laughs> with another Gordo on my mind, I had food at the ready, locked and loaded. Now to just fire away, hoping this would be enough food for the purple wonder. With my fingers crossed, this would be the last few pieces of food needed. I had enough with the purple menace. Yeah, I said it's a purple menace now, not a wonder. My money though, that was starting to rack up, so you know what? I'm good, man. 
With all the hens spawning more and more, I needed a good old silo for everything. I also had a formula to make the hens and roosters spawn quickly. With each coop, I had about two rooster rows and four hens. With a good stack of hens in my pocket, it was time to play catch and eat. Specifically with this tabby Gordo who looked like a cuddly cat. This was happening, but for now my focus was back to the locked door across the bridge, allowing me to venture into the moss blanket and so many secrets waiting for me. My family was ever growing and I made the coolest find with some mint mangoes. The dealio now was to loot and store away any hens and roosters I didn't need. My hen formula was one for the books. At the same time, this early into my game, I was already plort central. What was great as the game progressed, so did the little upgrades I was finding being uploaded to the shops. Bark, 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 bark. Heart module MK2, we're starting to get the upgrades now. Even the Cubeberry farm was really starting to pack a punch. I'd have to find a new home eventually because this was absolutely crazy. Now with just a few more things to unlock, my far, far range would officially be completed. For the most part, at least. No joke, Shiz just got real with how much of a jump in things I now had to do. Even this this. The refinery was now unlocked and I could store things for my extractors and portals and just so much more. I was curious to see about how many upgrades I actually unlocked now. Between all the module upgrades, I was about to have the most wonderful time. Something that did have to go sadly were the pink largos. I just wanted an ungodly amount of pink slime so I could farm loads of pink plorts. Besides the pink plorts, I had plorts of all flavors coming in. From rads to honey, crystal, and so much more. Even my coops were growing old and large, needing to make room for more hens to blossom. Speaking of which, I finally had the right amount of chickens for the tabby gordo. With a new morning here and all the foods overgrown, I fed everything I could and gathered the money the plorts had, upgrading the rest of my corrals to the max they allowed. All that was left to do was to unlock the inside far range docks. What was great about this place is that it finally gave me an area to put some incinerators up and give a place to put puddle slimes. That sparked something inside of me, like it was time to finally get some gadgets built. With all those being purchased, the next thing I needed was plorts. Lots and lots of plorts, especially to fill the requirements. Having to wait a bit longer for some more slime poop, I had my eye on another Gordo. I choose you chickens, now go and feed them please. The next on my to grab list was a slime only seen by the eyes, which meant I had to wait until these little buggers blinked for me. I'm looking for some hunter slimes, but that's, that's tricky because <laughs> they're invisible. <gasps> oh! That one? Oh. I also may have indulged a little too much with the tars eating away at the other slimes. Go ahead. Eat him. Eat him. Eat that guy. No, eat that guy. Not me. Go for that guy. Stop it. Go get that guy. Taking this a step further, I also decided to bring a tar with me to the other island. I'm spreading my love all over the place. You see? Well, I almost died, but... <laughs> Seeing that I needed more food for another Gordo, it was back to the far, far range. My food was also out of control, growing at speeds which the slimes could not eat faster, so I stuck to using the food feeders this time. I also learned that it would take 50 normal food types to pop the big ones. One, two, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come to Papa. No, 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 no. Come here, come here, come here. Where are the slimes? Ah, ah, ah. They're invisible! With another slime down, the next place to adopt more slimes was located behind this huge ducky door. I needed to fill certain statues with specific plorts, and in doing so would play this magical ducky sound. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> oh man, that brings back so much nostalgia. With a new target in sight, I had just the food to catch some glitchy slimes. The new map also revealed everything and got me one step closer to completing this place. Now I just had to figure out the perfect area for some new slimes far away from all the others. These were a tricky bunch, because if they weren't fed, they could run free. It also dawned on me that I now had space for puddle slimes. And what more than the quarry to give me just that. As I started up some tabby and boom slimes, the best distraction ever happened. Since the new combo of slimes had a new home, this left me freeing up some space for even more hens. Three coops plus a silo storage felt so right. Between all the extra plorts laying around and the money I was making, something was pulling me back towards the ancient ruins. Something big and red with a nice smile to match its energy. The only thing left to do was to set the rest of the ducky statue straight. Ah, I love it. Super magical teleporter. Fantastic stuff. The glass desert was now here. New slimes for the taking that reminded me of certain planets and bigger gordos that resembled those. Now beg the question though, what would I get rid of here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> All right. I was on a roll with the things needed to finish 100% of Slime Rancher, and that was a few fire slimes. The problem was finding my way outside the glass desert. I didn't really have a close portal back, so I did have to backtrack a little bit. With my first incinerator to my name, it gave me the perfect home for my fire slimes. I also had a new corral set up for some dervish slimes too. Knowing that they ate prickly pears, the best idea I had for them was cube berries. My mission now was feeding as many hens as I could to a new gordo and probably one of my favorite slimes out there. Yeah, give me the tangle. <sighs> Come to papa. Come here. Come to papa. The perfect place for these bad boys was in fact the grotto. Letting them run free inside was always the coolest thing to me. Now I just needed a few more phosphor slimes and by a few I meant so much more. Working towards all my excess plorts, hen coops, and food, I needed to figure out a surefire way to organize and collect all the plorts my tangles were creating. As much as I loved the chaos, I needed it to be more neutral chaos. So while taking a little peek at the gadgets tab, I was undecided with what to build next. What I was sure about was all the meat eaters in one area. I had my hunters, tabbies, and booms all bunched together. I also had the worst throw in the game, but after four times, surely I'd get the darn thing. Oh, I got it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Golden slime, baby. Let's go. Look at that. I got a golden plort. Soon enough, I would have all the resources needed for the extractors. Building the first set of pumps inside the far range, having the drills set up inside the quarry area for diamonds, and then taking the aperies into the moss blanket for some thick royal jelly. The extractors did have a cooldown of 13 minutes or so, so I would have to wait, which was perfect because it gave me time to prep for the next bunch of things needed inside the labs. Making sure to grab the three different types of materials from previous days, my pumps with its oil, the drills and their stones, and the aperies and any honeycombs to take back with me. The toughest thing to accept was needing strange diamonds for better builds. Because they were so rare, I'd have to wait for the special moment to happen. The biggest transformation upon me was drones. I finally had one thing that could save all the ports and so much more. It'd even take over the tangled grotto, creating a place to just sell or gather whatever I needed. Turns out I also had quite the materials when it came to building drones too. And I actually didn't know that. <laughs> With every return to all my pumps, drills, and aperies, I was hoping for just one of three rare ingredients to appear. With a lot more resources coming from all of my extractors, I finally found the lava core that I was looking for. I just wanted a simple diamond or two, but the drills wouldn't give me a darn thing. With my refinery now unlocked and a few more builds to my belt, I was attempting to try something different here. I also had to make sure wherever I placed the depots that they stayed there. Some of the builds were a one and done situation and others could just be picked up. The great thing about the refinery is that now I could build them in each area I set up the extractors. At this point in, I was crossing every part of my body and hoping this would work. Turns out I could only build two drones at each location on my range, but that was more than enough for me. Desperate to test out how these depots worked, I built myself a pink one inside the grotto, thinking it would work the way I wanted it to, but no chance. Instead, I had a much better and more effective idea. <gasps> and they're starting to clean up all that too? Dude, 290? These things hold 300. I guess I forgot about that. Since what I had didn't seem like enough, I took some more slimes and added to my already existing and crazy town of my grotto. Putting off all the quests I did up until now, I wanted to see what it would be like to completely finish a quest line. Of all people, it was Victor Humphrey. And what made this even better is when I gave him exactly what he asked for, he gave me something in return. I think this is an important, an important quest too. Oh, yeah, it is. Look at that. We literally just got mail from him as well. I couldn't believe what I was about to get myself into, but this was all new to me. So much more than I ever explored even years ago. This is new. Excuse me? Oh my god, I'm getting goosebumps. I've actually never played this far into the game. Oh my god, I thought I beat everything in Slime Rancher. This is 100% new. What is this place? <laughs> A whole area just for me, and it was like Slime Rancher, but enter the Matrix. Hello, hello. This is like Super Mario. What the fudge? The music is so good. Oh, <laughs> come here. Come here, come to Papa. Come here, come here, come to Papa. It was pretty straightforward. The green glitchy stuff allowed me to find hidden slimes, and certain slimes with an odd expression gave me some too. Exit portal, follow the beacons. Oh my god, there's so many. I'm going, I'm going, guys, I'm going. What the fuck? Bug report, we got 66 bug reports. That's not bad for our first time in. 
Finding myself back inside the glitchy world of slime matrix, I found it difficult trying not to lose slimes with all the tars going crazy. I would also go on to meeting a new person in the game. These new manifold cubes would give me great power to build things better than my already existing advanced stuff. Though for now, I took a break from all that craziness. A place I did want to visit, however, was back inside the glass desert. What else had I missed and needed to find or feed? Between the few slimes I had, this place needed more plorts for me to complete more of the desert. I also made the quaintest of homes for a few slimes. Two incinerators was always better than one. This new silo of mine also put the biggest of smiles on my face. With no chance of diamonds in the future, what I wanted now was more keys for locked doors. The next one took me back into the moss blanket, beating a big honey looking fellow until it went pop grabbing the key for myself and heading back to the range. The next area was unlocked by doing a quest for Ogden Ortis. So we gotta get a bunch of these food for Taifu and then the super upgradey stuff. This place was exactly what I both wanted and needed because of the food upgrades I'd get. In the area, you would pick up a few purple fruits and avoid the sabers, trading them in for tofu and slowly working my way towards the first reward. I thought I would stop there, but apparently I would also gain access to a place called Moki's or Mochi's Manor, another area for a certain speedy slime. With all the drones doing my dirty work, I had to remember to fill the water back up. That was probably the only thing to worry about, but totally worth it. This is why I didn't really enjoy the depot too much. It did store a lot, but back and forth with my inventory space, I'd felt like it was just too much of a chore. So with more drills in hand, I still needed certain resources to fill the refinery. Meeting up with Ogden once again, I really needed to finish up this first berry farm. All I I needed now was a few more and that reward was mine just because i made sure to have a drone for my phase lemons giving me a break and for them to pick up my slack now for just a few more balls in holes and me being so so happy oh oh oh, 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 oh hold on hold on hold on hold on this allowed me to grow and grow and grow my food and never have it to rot as long as it stayed within the new green soil things would be okay if the drills didn't give me what I needed, then that meant I needed to work towards the treasure pots. Crossing my fingers, they would give me something so much more. Anything, really. <gasps> diamond! 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 I knew it! Diamond! 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, guys, we are going to the glass desert. Oh my god, finally. Holy crap, it only took me forever. Making sure to carry a few plorts with me, I had to see what else was out there. The desert also had certain statues for me to fill. The coolest thing about unlocking the super secret water from Indiana Jones was what it did for the wilted cactuses in game, sprouting everything and making it look so pretty. What I did find out, however, is that I still needed some mosaic plorts and some dervish ones at that. We did it. Oh my God, mosaic. And we got mosaic. Oh my God, mosaic, mosaic, mosaic. Mosaic, mosaic. Now I just had to find where to throw these darn plorts. Statues were everywhere, and some were even hidden up high. With all the ancient water I had now, I found a few places to spray. The last area being seconds away as I went for a Hail Mary, hoping I would just hit something. Knowing exactly where I had to go, you best believe I was making it with more than enough time. Having everything sprouted from water in the area, I had just the thing to get back to my far range. My first portal from that diamond I found. Seeing that I did need a new corral for the slimes, I did have to demolish a crop lot. That said, the mosaics here were about to become my money makers. Though my adventure didn't stop there. It seemed for the time being the only place I'd find diamonds were in treasure pots. So where else would I look? I spent hours upon hours farming my extractors and never found a single diamond. So while having a second portal to my name, things were about to get more interesting. For the time being, I had to make sure I fed that big blue gordo up as much as I could. Finding a new portal to a different area I'd never visited before, soon. The next gordo to tackle was back inside the glass desert, and one that I did need to wait for because of the silver parchment. The next key I acquired connected me to the same room I found my first ancient waters in. Also, see all the hens my drones brought in? It was perfect timing to feed the other side of my range. The next thing I did was exploring more of the map. Some of the stuff was open, but I did find a little crevasse of an area that took me to a completely new place, and one I never saw before. This was news to me and possibly some of you too. There was even another slime toy just sitting around acting all coy. The blue teleporter I had also gave me a quick access to the moss blanket. This couldn't have been more perfect. The Slimepedia and everything I had up to this point was so close to being filled. Working on the next upgrade for Ogden's farm, between more fruits to tofu, it was clear as day that I almost had every item. The next one is what I want. It's the food overgrowth. That thing is going to be beautiful. <laughs> and it's the next stop to 100%ing this game, Ogden. Yes, sir. One thing I was looking for was the market link. I needed a way to get rid of all the tangle and phosphor plorts, hoping this would be the last time to unlocking everything at Ogden's farm. Learning about Ogden's lore or story of where he came from and learning what the company did to him, I had to help him out. 
Oh, I thought I totally did. I guess I didn't because I had to buy double. Interesting. Okay. What I didn't find until much, much later was the 7Z upgrades and all it had for me. This just had to be it. <laughs> Advanced slime toys. Oh my God. Keep going. <gasps> Market link. Grotto up. Wait, grotto upgrade. What? Hold the. What? Hold, hold. Wait a minute. What the fudge is a grotto upgrade? What the heck is a grotto? Okay. That, like it, it, oh, whoa. Um, I was holding someone, a friend of a friend. So grotto upgrade is, oh my God. Has the grotto upgrade always been this big? It look at, it's massive now. Like even bigger than before. What the heck? Yes, please. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> all right. Here's what we do. You are going to sell everything. Market link activate. Same for this one. We're going to make so much money. Just watch the money go up like crazy, okay? And just watch that. If anything, just watch the money. Ogden, buddy, your place would soon be mine. Looking to make some more money in the game, I had just the plan. Leaving the drones to sell everything they could and then storage everything else afterwards. I also learned about some different gadgets later on. I was curious to see what the first one did. Apparently an auto defense turret that would get rid of any tars on base. Upgrading my ranch was most of what was left. That and a few more gordos along the way. What took me the better part of a few days, I finally finished up most of what was the glitchy's lab. All that Victor asked of me was now 600 more of the glitchy slimes. The biggest update was about to become something so crazy and so much fun. These new and improved advanced drones that not only did two tasks, by the way, two tasks, but also looked so much better. I did also make a few more upgrades for the rest of the night. Tank Booster Ultra, which means more storage for my inventory. This was probably too much chaos for little old me, but I started producing so many more Tangle ones in the grotto. Having a hundred storage and now being able to sell at a hundred piece a time, it made things so much easier. I did spend a few more days inside of Victor's lab and I finally did it. The last upgrade in his place was all mine. Funny enough, after realizing though what this place was actually for, it felt a little overdone, but I was a happy camper. Between the biggest money-making spot I had with my tangles and selling most of what plorts were stored away, I needed so much more money for all the new upgrades with the 7Z tab. A part of me felt like they would make the last few upgrades add up to a million or maybe more. It also seemed like the glass desert was the best place to go for diamonds. I kid you not, on my first pickup with certain drills, it was just way too easy. Though I was also looking for other materials for my refinery and 100%ing all the items I could. From different oils and sands and even these spicy looking pepper jams, I was on a roll with all the stuff coming in. And then also, look at this, this thing is a chicken cloner. So it apparently um, clones chickens half the time. So let's see if we can get half the amount of chickens. Oh my God. Here we go. Chickens, baby. Chickens. Are you coming over here, guys? Come on. There's chickens. Lots of chickens. There's so many chickens. Oh my God. Maybe this was a little too much for my drones to handle, by the way. I mean, my computer was lagging with every visit of my tangles. The next big thing I wanted to work towards was capturing whatever gordos I could, mainly giant golden ones if that was possible. Now with just a few more treasure pods, I had a couple things left to actually complete all of the slime rancher and 100%ing it, but there were still a lot of treasure pods I'd missed. A handful of them left within the range and the moss blanket, but oh man, let me tell you, the ancient runes had a few tricky ones. Not only that, but a big Gordo I still needed to pop. The glass desert, that was the least favorite of mine because of the height they wanted me to fly up to and actually open some of these treasure pods. This one had gold plorts and literally took me 30 minutes to find. Oh my god, look at this. It's literally on the tippity top. Most of the places in here did take some time and patience, but overall I did get past to that wall. I will say I was also so excited to see some better extractors coming in. I thought they all stopped around the advanced mark. Mustache Island is this one. This is the third, the other like question mark island, whatever you want to call it. It's like the uh, the mystery island. Let's call it a mystery spot. Ooh, let's call it that. Is it oh, every year? Look, look, look. Secret portal. And then if you look here, oh, there's nothing on the map. It's all question mark because I'm gone. Oh, this is the Mustache Island. Oh. <laughs> Check this out. What do we have? Yeah, Mustache Island. A big old mustache. Hey, mustache. <laughs> mustache Island. I love it. 
That's so cool. More mustache. Oh my God, I just realized up there. And then we got the handlebar fashion pod of the mustache eyes. Oh. Of course, this wouldn't be a complete game without finishing up the achievements. I had only a few left, and that started with the suckening on 15 or more slimes. It was actually easy enough having as many slimes in a corner, and then just using the vac in a certain motion. I mean, just look at how easy that was. Onto the next achievement, I had to feed a plort to an already big slime, prepping the stage before and being shocked by how fast the hydro turret shut that tar down. The next achievement was tricky for me. I couldn't find the right spot for shooting slimes into the hoop, so I would miss most of my shots. I found that just sitting on the rim and actually moving with it helped loads. That and also having more than 100 slimes in case you were a bad throw like myself. <laughs> Placing down some snares for that Hunter Gordo achievement, I didn't have too much to find while inside the Slimepedia. Most of it was just a few missing chicks and some slimes in the Mochi's manner. Slowly but surely, I'd start up a race and went on my way collecting their plorts, adding almost everything I needed into the Slimepedia there on out. Between the last few chicks I found near the mossy blanket entrance and back inside the glass desert, that was it. Only a couple more things and this would be my first game 100% completed. All that was left to do for the day was collect any plorts that I can make for some more home upgrades. The plan wasn't really 100 days, but because I needed money and didn't store plorts like I should have, I skipped a few days here and there to speed up the process. I also forgot about finishing up the actual story of Beatrix LeBeau, learning about what the love of her grandfather found and teaching us to take more risks in life. Because that's what life was about, taking risks. This is it, this is it. That day, Beatrix took a moment to reflect. She thought about Hobson and Thora, and the adventure she'd explored the far, far range. But most of all, she thought of Casey, and wondered where life would be. Oh, please don't say that you'll go. My heart can't bear the news. Just knowing that you'll be a thousand light years away. And will you know when it's through? When you find what you're looking for, will you know what to do? A thousand light years away when you do. Oh, when you do. And I should have said it before you were gone. Cause I'm kicking myself for waiting oh so long And I should have held you near Every time I fear Somehow you just wouldn't feel the same So please don't say that you go My heart can't bear the news Just Knowing that you'll be a thousand light years away If you do, oh if you do Well I'm just sitting here gazing up at the stars Let's say we pick one out and call the whole thing ours And even though that See, ain't the same for you and me Well, you'll know and I'll know That you and I can't even be A thousand light years away And I'd still love you Oh, yes, I do I love you This song always gives me goosebumps. <laughs> oh, my God. With the completion of the story, it opened up the last few areas to find. Three vaults, matter of fact, and surprisingly, there was a lot of stuff in each of them. The first one had me at an awe as I found treasure pod galore. What? There's so many! Wait, should I be opening up all these? Oh my god, I just realized I probably shouldn't. The second almost felt like a tease while sucking in just a single gold plort. Soon to realize that there was a secret button. Oh, oh, I thought this was it. I literally thought this would be it. Oh my God. Look at all those beautiful pots of money. 
<laughs> oh my god i was like i was about to not give up but i was just like about to accept you know the fate that was there lastly this one confused me a bit unsure of what i was doing i picked up the food just in case oh 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 that's why Huh. Okay. Well, dang it. Um, yeah, I should have been a little bit faster with that, but this should be enough to get me to where I want to be with my money situation. It was great, though, because with the last few golden plorts I'd gathered, this would be it for Slime Rancher. Last two upgrades finish the game. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we did it. And we got star mail. Hold on. From the Z. Oh, yeah. From the corporation. Look at that. You've achieved the highest possible rank currently available. Oh, baby. Yes. This is it. A day 102, but it's not like, you know, 100 days. It's more of just, I wanted to beat this game in however long it took. And it took a long time. Don't get me wrong. It took a long time. I will say again, the first half of this video when recording and everything, I was doing it while sick, while with COVID and stuff. So like, just thank you. I really do hope you guys enjoyed the journey that I took and everything about this game. It is a fun game. You definitely want to check it out. Surprisingly enjoyable. Okay, that's all I can really say. But that said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this. I love your faces and I will see you in my next video and or live stream at Ray of Pandas. I love you guys so much. I really, really, and truly do. Thank you. Just thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is Ray Pandas signing out. <laughs> Bye, guys.